Welcome to video number 17 in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahey, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. The concept of tourism's carrying capacity has its roots in the agricultural problem of how many cows can graze in a pasture. If a farmer puts too few cows in the pasture, then he has excess grass, water, and space going to waste. But if he puts too many cows in the pasture, they won't get all the grass, water, and space they need to grow and produce milk and beef properly. When there are just a few cows in the pasture, it's easy to see there is no stress on the cows or the farmer's resources. But as the number of cows increases, the pasture will eventually reach a tipping point and the law of diminishing returns begins to apply. To gain the optimum return on his investment, the farmer must keep a sharp eye on his cows and the condition of the pasture and manage them carefully. The same is true with tourists and their activities at the attractions and facilities that are developed to attract and service them. The three carrying capacities that are most commonly associated with tourism productivity are physical, social, and environmental. They apply to the quality, quantity, and type of interaction between tourists and the people and places they visit. The carrying capacity of a destination is the total of the carrying capacities of its various attractions, facilities, and infrastructure. So the grand total consists of numerous subtotals that need to be calculated correctly. Most destinations want to attract more tourists and increase their length of stay in order to gain optimal economic benefits. But at some point, enough is enough, regardless of the economic benefits received. The physical carrying capacity of a destination, including its various subcomponents, addresses its size limits, which dictate the number of visitors that can be accommodated at any one time. Examples are size of a beach for sunbathers, number of ski lifts on a mountain, parking lot spaces for tour buses, number of hotel rooms and restaurant seats, and number of tickets that can be sold to a concert or sporting event. Once these limits are reached, there is simply no more space available or the conditions no longer comply with safety regulations. So the physical carrying capacity has reached its upper limit. In this regard, the physical carrying capacity also serves as a visitor management tool. A destination's social carrying capacity concerns both tourists and locals. For tourists, it's the number of visitors an area can accommodate before it gets too crowded for a specific activity and the satisfaction level drops. For locals, it's the number of tourists a destination can absorb before they begin to overwhelm and adversely affect the local culture. For each group, there is a critical balance that needs to be identified and not exceeded. Ideally, the lower the two numbers would be the standard used. The environmental carrying capacity is also commonly referred to as the ecological or biological carrying capacity. It is the number of visitors and everything that is developed to attract and service them that an area can accommodate before its ecological system begins to suffer irreversible damage due to overuse. All industries have impacts, so sometimes the question becomes, would you rather have a new chemical factory in your community or an all-inclusive resort? To avoid exceeding the environmental carrying capacity, it's important to establish indicators, monitor variances, and make the necessary operational changes to adjust a destination's ecological footprint. Determining the carrying capacity for a destination involves many factors, including the individual characteristics of a destination. Major considerations are the number of visitors, the types of use by various visitors, and the amount of use by average visitors. Many of these concerns can be controlled by proper resource management and facility design. To protect the community's interests, the number of local residents, their demand on resources, and their quality of life must also be a top priority. Carrying capacities are fluid, so whenever any of the many variables involved in determining the carrying capacity changes, the entire area's carrying capacity experiences a corresponding change. Density shows how carrying capacity affects visitor enjoyment of the natural environment. 
With a density of one person per square kilometer, a visitor will enjoy a near pristine environment. At 10 persons per square kilometer, a visitor is less likely to be alone or see wildlife. At 100 persons per square kilometer, the area will be devoid of most wildlife and suffer from pollution and ecological damage. At 1,000 persons per square kilometer, the natural environment becomes overwhelmed by people and takes on the characteristics of a city with the need for ranger patrols and trash removal services. Tourism planning must address the scale of tourism that is desirable within the local culture and environment. The limits set should be supported by scientific and social research because most developers, entrepreneurs, and politicians favor bigger and bigger developments. Cancun in Mexico is frequently cited as a destination that has substantially exceeded its social and environmental caring capacities, much to the detriment of the local community. Tourism planning that addresses caring capacity and sets limits of acceptable change must include significant input from all its stakeholders, especially the local people, if the destination's environmental and socio-cultural integrity is to be maintained at a sustainable level. Distributing tourists and their activities over a larger area can sometimes be more harmful to the environment than when they are concentrated in a smaller area with appropriate carrying capacity limits. So there are many indicators to examine and monitor when setting carrying capacity thresholds for a specific destination. Fortunately, both tourists and locals are demanding better environmental stewardship, including well-managed carrying capacities. Now I invite you to watch video number 18, Tourism Values, Philosophy, and Vision. Thank you.